Hi, this is Colin Seal, founder and CEO of ThinkLaw, and we are going through lesson two of the ThinkLaw program. Um, to give you a little bit of a background, when I started law school, um, we actually engaged in a very similar activity to the activity that you're seeing here in lesson two. So there might be some folks that might look at a lesson involving a candy shop and say, this seems kind of amateur, this seems somewhat juvenile, but there's actually a really advanced concept that's being taught here known as legal synthesis, which we'll be using throughout the course of Think Law. So I figured the best way to introduce it would be through this type of lesson. This is actually the only lesson in Think Law that's not based on um, an actual real life legal case. That said, you know, if you look at this and you make the determination that, you know what, you have a limited amount of time and you prefer not to spend it on this lesson, that's perfectly fine as well. But um, I do at least want to introduce this and go through it a little bit with you. So every lesson in Think Law starts out with this overview where you see an outline showing you what's going to happen in this lesson. In this lesson, we talk about the rules of crossing the street the origin of those rules and the exceptions to those rules, just to kind of model the way laws are developed. And we're going to use that same concept to deal with a hypothetical scenario involving a candy shop. And if there's enough time, we do a little exercise at the end where it's just a fun sort of logical puzzle where we're putting together some legal rules for patterns that we're seeing. Another feature you'll see in every Think Law lesson is you'll see common core content standards aligned from grades five through grades 12. That said, even if your state does not use common core standards, you will find that, you know, say Virginia, for instance, Virginia standards of learning aligned almost exactly one to one with the common core standards that are provided here. So um, these are a great guide just to kind of show you what the actual skills are to being emphasized in this particular lesson. So let's move right into the lesson. Before we get into it, I just want to make sure we, one other reminder. Before you do this, make sure you remind your thinkers to not look ahead. This is one of those lessons where looking ahead kind of shows them the end of the movie. We don't want that to happen. So try to make sure that if you're using a physical workbook, they just kind of fold over their pages one at a time. And then if they're using the ebook, that they're just scrolling down one page at a time collectively so they're not getting too far ahead. As I said, the lesson starts with the idea of, you know, what do we know about crossing the street? What are the consequences about these? And as you kind of see and look through these instructors notes, you'll see that there's a lot of probing questions here that really help to push your participants to think about something as easy as the rules of crossing the street in a way they probably have never thought about it before. Um, and that way is really understanding what legal synthesis is. So to start out this activity, we're looking at Hershey's Kisses. And they have to come up with what the rule on the store is based off of just looking at this one slide involving the Hershey Kisses. It's pretty predictable that some students might say, how can you come up with a rule with only one thing? That's a good segue into the way you actually make decisions moving forward. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to force them to come up with the rule, even with that very limited evidence. And then when they see the second thing, the Twizzlers, they're able to further develop this rule a little bit, okay? So at first they thought, okay, this must be only chocolate. By the time the Twizzlers get introduced, you know it can't just be chocolate. There's something else that's being involved in this rule. And if you look at the Reese's, that's also included in the store. Now, if your rule was that it had to only be some red item, um, it gets a little bit more complicated once you throw in the Reese's. So... Now, when you come up with that rule, whenever you finish those three first candies, now you have to decide whether or not these candies should be in or out of the store. And this actually becomes a really funny debate, regardless of the age of the participants in, 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 in your class. 
there's some things about Skittles that they have in common with the Hershey's Kisses and with the Reese's, for instance, but these unwrapped gummy bears seem a little bit different. And it's not really clear whether or not those can get in the store. But one of the important things that we'll see here is we're actually forcing our participants to come up with reasons why they should be in the store and why they should not be in the store for each item. We really want students to get the understanding of multiple perspectives of an argument as a way to enhance their critical thinking skills. And this is a practical way to kind of get them to grow on that. Another important piece is that Rules are rules, right? Rules could be somewhat arbitrary. So as the rule is being developed and further refined, there's always this question that we're asking. Any reason not based on the actual evidence that this should or should not be in the store, right? So in this case, it's hard to figure out why that choice is there. And probably a lot of students might leave that blank. But when you get to this example, when you're looking at the candy cigarettes, you'll actually find that a lot of times the rules that students have come up with would work for, say, the Twizzlers, the, the, the Hershey's Kisses, and the Skittles, and that rule will probably technically be the same for the candy cigarettes. So this is where any other reasons not based on evidence why this should should not be in the store becomes interesting because Students might have a very interesting debate as to whether a store should or should not be selling candy cigarettes where it shows this picture of somebody smoking and it's like just like that, right? So it becomes interesting. And then when we go to the very next piece and we're actually trying to synthesize a legal rule combining all of this, we're telling you that the owners came back to the store and tells you that Kisses, Skittles, Twizzlers, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and Gummy Bears are all in the store. But the one thing that isn't is the candy cigarettes. So now you need to come up with what that rule must be in order to make that work. And that's where it gets to be somewhat creative and very interesting. And as part of the conclusion, understanding legal synthesis, we have this little activity where we talk about what the think bigger is and um, just a pattern. If there's time in your class or in your session, you can go ahead and walk through that with them. And it's a fun activity just to get their minds going a little bit. So. Again, I'm not going to, I'm going to emphasize this one more time, really important that they do not look ahead in this lesson so that they can see these things as they come up. All right. So that covers lesson two um, and stay tuned for lesson three.